Hey everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar video 2. Um, here I have Adam in a box pulled up again on the uh, high definition television uh, via the iPad 2. I've told you about the different uh, components, what we're looking at here. Um, I, and I'd like to do, tell you that uh, you can see the color of the orbital will change. And that actually represents a change in the phase because the wave function is time dependent. And so what it does is, 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 is it basically um, changes um, as time changes. Um, so you'll see that change in what we call phase, obviously, because we're talking about a wave here. Um, as a wave changes phase, uh, you'll see different colors, and that's, that's what we have going on here. Okay, so here I have a hydrogen atom, one proton, one electron, and I have it in the one zero zero state. N equals 1, that tells us that it is the first shell, the first level of energy, it's the closest to the nucleus, and this is what we call the ground state. Um, zero being uh, um, uh, the L, zero of course being an S orbital, and if I'm talking about an S or spherical, spherically symmetrical orbital, um, the M sub L, the magnetic number, will always be zero. It's just a sphere, and that's kind of what we talked about. Okay, so... Um, of course, because this, uh, this atom is uh, in the ground state, the electron is very close to the nucleus, I'm going to have a very low um, negative binding energy. There's a lot of energy binding the electron to the atom here, and that's at 13.06 electron volts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and increase the N number to 2, and I'm going to keep the L and M sub L zero, so that's going to give me a 2s orbital. So what I've done is that that electron has now jumped into the second shell of energy. Okay, so it's still only one electron we're talking about here. Second shell of energy, um, a little further away, but you can see the binding energy has now gone down to negative 3.04 electron volts. Because the electron is further away from the nucleus, there's less binding energy. So it'll take less energy to get rid of that electron or to ionize it. Now, this is really cool because what I have is I have a sphere within a sphere. Um, and this is what kind of gets to the kind of some of the really interesting um, interpretations of quantum mechanics. Um, you can see my little graph here. I have some probability density that the electron is close to the nucleus, and then I have some probability density that the electron is a little further away with uh, the most probable radius being 5.2 a sub naught, or um, 5.2 Bohr radii. Um, but this little dark area, this is an area of no probability, because we're talking about a wave, right? And uh, when we take the absolute value of that wave, um, if you can imagine a wave going up and down like this, that's kind of what we have here, is I have a little bit of probability density here, and then the wave-like characteristic, it goes to zero probability density, so there's no probability whatsoever of finding the electron here, and there is probability of finding it here. And I think it's very hard for people to understand that there's a probability of it here, probability of it here, but absolutely none here, and then people go, well, how does it get from here to here, or here to here, without going through here? And that is one of the biggest paradoxes of all this quantum mechanics stuff. And the answer is, it just does. It, it can either exist here, or it can exist here, and there's a certain probability of it here and here, but there is no probability of it existing here, and that is due primarily to the wave-like characteristics of the electron. Okay, guys, we'll talk about some of the other orbitals um, here in a bit. Take care.